be looking into splitting our server and our client so we can have our dedicated server running and our client joining. Let's get started. All right, so uh, first thing first, let's uh, create an init scene um, and delete the simple scene because we, we won't need it. Well, we're going to start structuring our project. Um, so what we want here is we have, we want an init scene where it, there we're, we're going to still put our Steam Manager. Uh, Steam Manager, so let's put it back. Steam Manager. And uh, we're going to have our init here. But that init is going to do um, something different than what it was doing. So um, uh, I'm going to remove the, the, the gamer tag because now it's working. So we don't we don't really need to show it. Um, so let's go in here, go in init, and then I'm going to change this class. So um, what we want right now is we want to figure out Am I a server or am I a client? Because if I'm a server, then I need to instantiate uh, to initialize a server. And if it's a client, I need to initialize a client. So what we're going to do is we're going to have some game object here. Game object, um, server, game object. And we're going to have the same thing for whoops, the client. So the client, I'm going to remove the unused import. And then here, then we're going to change it. We're going to say on start. What we want to check is, um, am I a server or am I a client? Is, is in fact, now that they're um, separate builds, uh, they are doing some things really different. So one thing that is important with server build is it has no graphic device at all because it doesn't render anything. It's a dedicated server. It doesn't need to render anything. It just needs to know where are the object, the collision, their bound, where they are in the space, what they do, but they, it doesn't need to render um, anything because it's a dedicated server. It has no screen. So, all right. So first, the way you can know about that is a really basic way. You can do that system info dot graphics device type equals, oops, uh, null. So um, you can see here, here all the graphic API. So if the it's metal, then you're running on a Mac. Um, the other ones, but you have PlayStation uh, 4, 5, Xbox, whatever. And But for us, we're, if you're a dedicated server, you're running on null. You have no uh, graphic device type. So in this case, we're going to say console.log. Uh, no, it's uh, console right line that I'm doing. I love to use this. Um, server build because it's going to run in um, command line. So you have access to uh, the basic C sharp things and you'll get the output. I think I think with this, you still get the output because um, Unity kind of rerouted in the engine. Um, but um, I, I like to use it for on a server. Instantiate. Then we instantiate our server. Server game object here. And then uh, we destroy ourselves. We can destroy a uh, game object. Because then the server initialization, the, the server game object is going to take over for the rest of the initialization. Like this init script doesn't know anything else about um, server or client as of now. And we're going to say else. Um, we're gonna do um, debug.log because now I'm I'm in engine, and I'm gonna say client build. It would probably write still with um, console write line, and probably that debug.log wouldn't work here though. So that's why I, I use console write line. Um, instantiate, and then we want the client game object, and then we're gonna do. Um, here, we're going to also um, prepare something. We're going to go to the scene manager dot um, scene manager, no, dot load scene async, and we're going to load the main menu. So the server doesn't have a concept of main menu because he, he's just waiting for people to connect to play the game. He's already in the game. He's, he's ready to go. But um, the client here needs to go through the whole flow to go to the main menu, and then he's going to connect to the server. Um, the client uh, geo is going to connect to the server. And then still, we're going to destroy um, that game object here. OK. OK, OK, OK. In fact, yeah, I can put it outside here because it's executed about places. 
Okay, so this is our initialization script. So we're gonna go ahead and create those prefab. All right, so back in the, um, the, the in Unity, we're gonna create a folder for server stuff, server and a folder for client, uh, client. And then inside the server, we wanna do a server network manager. And in the client one, we're gonna do a client, oh, it's reloading. Need to give it a minute here. There we go, client net network manager. There we go. Okay, so um, here we're gonna just go into uh, the game folder and then we're gonna do a, a prefab folder. Uh, it's gonna work, prefab folder, let's go prefab. And then inside, we're gonna create a prefab here. We're gonna say server game object and we're gonna create another one uh, for the client. So prefab client game object. On the server, we're gonna add a server network manager and on the client, we're gonna add a client uh, network manager. Here we go. So that init script can have the server on the server and the client on the client. Um, so for now, it does nothing. It does literally nothing. And um, what I'm gonna need to do here is create also um, the scenes. So uh, yeah, well, what's this folder structure? Yeah, the prefab should not be here. In fact, it should be at the root of the assets. Um, so yeah, the prefabs are here. Yeah, there you go. And the scene uh, here, we're gonna create our main menu scene, main menu. Uh, and we're gonna add it to the build setting for sure because we're gonna need that if we wanna be able to change scenes. So this one was deleted, remove it. We can put in it and we can put the main menu. Make sure they ended this first so that um, whenever it's like uh, the game is loading in build mode, it's uh, always start with the in it. Uh, yeah, so there we go. So now, if I do, I have this here, if I do this, um, we should see that uh, we have the client build. Now, if you want to build the server side of it, um, you're going to go into build setting, you're going to switch to dedicated server, you're going to check the development build because we want to see uh, the logs, otherwise in production you don't want the logs, so they're um, when, whenever you deploy in production, you should remo remove that option. And right now we only have the Windows platform, but it's fine because we are on Windows. But whenever you are ready and want to deploy your server, you're just going to go into your install in Unity Hub, take the Unity um, version you have, and you're going to add uh, Linux dedicated server build support. So whenever you have that, that's going to mean you're going to be able to build and deploy um, that server on Linux. But for now, we don't need it. We have... Um, uh, Windows platform and uh, so yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and build So while I was um, doing all of this I had an error in the build setting here uh, that wasn't going away I needed to restart my editor, but once restarted I could do the build so um, Now what we have here is we have this and if I start it You'll see that there's a window where there's a bunch of, st of things being outputted, uh, mainly um, Unity uh, initialization. And then uh, we have an error, uh, the Steam Manager. Um, and that's, uh, that's something you can have because um, right now on Steam, I am offline. So um, the Steam in it uh, didn't work. But we have our server build. So our server is um, ready and we just need to tell him to accept connection. Now let's go in our um, server game object and open the script. First thing we're going to do is this is going to inherit from network manager uh, that is in the uh, uh, name says unity.net code. So uh, watch that import here. And uh, with that, this is going to make us enable to um, set up the network manager that is on the server from code. So we're going to go into um, on enable. Uh, not this one on uh, enable. I don't know why he doesn't want to complete it, uh, but we're going to need it to do a void on enable. Uh, there we go. 
Um, so this, what we want to do in this is we actually want to set up the transport. So we're going to do unity transport, transport equal game object that get component unity transport. Okay. And we're going to say in here, uh, network config dot network transport equal transport okay so that is as simple as it get now what we want to do is we want to do on server started add our own method so the on server started method uh yeah uh, i'm gonna need to call it uh, let's say callback here uh and then we want an on client connected callback and we're gonna say uh, plus equal uh, this, and then this can just be on client connected, and then we're gonna listen to on client disconnected, <clears throat> and we're gonna do uh, our own method for that too. Uh, no, not this, not this, and uh, make it like that. So that, uh, yeah, we want to remove that on and the callback at the end. Okay, so that, with that, we kind of have everything um, set up in terms of just um, uh, the callbacks. Now what we want to do is start a server. That's actually going to start listening through connection, okay? So that's it. For us, that's all we need to do here. We're going to just put some uh, basic log. So here, uh, console dot right line um, client connected. Uh, let's just do that. We're going to keep it simple for now. Uh, no, so this is in fact disconnected, disconnected. And then here is the connected one client connected and then we're going to do here uh, server listening listening for connections okay so with that we have our server set up and he's going to be able to just um, set up the network transport for us and then start the server so right now the transport has only the default setting so if we go back into um, our Unity project here, it's going to refresh. And if we go on, uh, so sometimes this happened like the first time you, you had it, but if you go into prefab, you just click outside, re-click on it, you're going to see that we have our default thing. So the select transport is not set. We have Unity transport here, but you don't have to set it manually. The code is going to set it. And once the code has set it, um, you're going to be able to come here and see in the connection data that you have the address and the port that you need to connect to. But since we don't need to set it manually, we can remove that and the code is going to set it. You're just going to have to connect to the default um, host and uh, uh, port. But we can change that at runtime and that's what we're going to do in the future. But for now, we're going to use the default settings. All right, now back in... Uh, uh our editor. Um, I'm just going to correct a uh, small mistake I did on the server, server network manager. Um, I put get component, but it was add component. Um, but with, change, with that change, you can test the build. You should see um, uh, our log, um, server listening for connection. But for the sake of time, I'm going to wait uh, myself to do it at the end uh, to show you guys at the end. So we're going to go into script, game, client, and we're going to do the client part now because now that we have the server um, ready for connection, we kind of want um, uh, the, the, the client to connect to it. So um, yeah, this is going to be uh, pretty simple. So we're going to say on start. Uh, so here, uh, still network manager. Oops, make sure it imported the right um, netcode. We can remove the other ones for now. Um, and on start, what we actually want to do is super simple. It's exactly the same. Transport, transport, uh, equal game object that add component. This time, let's do it uh, right the first time. Unity transport. Uh, and we're going to say uh, that our network config that um, network transport equal the transport. 
and we're gonna just say start client Oop, client and uh, we can say debug.log client ready here here we go um, so now whenever the um, the client start, it should try to connect to the server at the default set with the default setting on the Unity transport. And uh, we should see the connection happen on the server and our client should be ready and connected. One last thing before uh, we go is um, in our init script, we're going to remove the uh, change scene for um, the client uh, reason being is uh, whenever when i tested this um, i realized that um, whenever you connect in fact the server is kind of telling you which scene to go to so um uh, you connect i was connecting to the server moving to the main menu and the server was saying go back to init so then i was coming back to init and it was an infinite loop so um in fact we're gonna need the server to tell us which scene to load um and uh the thing is right now we're connecting in initialization but at some point in the future this is just to show you how to connect to the server at some point in the future we're actually going to go through a main menu and stuff and whenever we connect to the server we're going to be in the lobby scene and then um, we're going to go to the game scene so uh yeah so as of right now we can test this to see if the client can connect to the server so back in UDD, just did a um, uh, server build uh, and we're going to start it and there it is. So we have our server right here um, listening to connection. Uh, let's just do this and close this one so that we can have both side by side. And then here um, uh, in the client, we're going to clear it. If I start it, I should see here uh, the client connecting. And there it is. The client has connected to the server. The client is ready, is in the init scene because the server is in the init scene. And now um, you know how to connect your client to your dedicated server. There it is for our dedicated server setup. So right now we have a dedicated server that we can start and we have a client that can connect to it. So in the next video, we're gonna start adding the backend into the equation. So we're gonna start doing um, some um, backend server that our client is gonna be able to um, use the Steam ticket uh, for login to login from uh, to, to our server. Um, for that, we're gonna install Python and then we're gonna set up um, Visual Studio code so that you guys can follow along. If you like the video, please like, subscribe, and share. Hit the notification bell, and I'll see you in the next video.